Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of GIS Answers. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Today we'll be looking at uh, Ohio and Bigfoot sightings. So this is part three of the series and this should be the last one for Ohio unless somebody else uh, wants me to look at a particular county. And uh, we're looking at clusters of sightings in Ohio. So we're just going to pan around and uh, look for some uh, clusters and uh, see what we can find. Right here in uh, Portage looks like um, a cluster around the state park. S uh, West Branch State Park looks like a, a few sightings within there. So the sightings are in yellow, uh, either labeled A or B. A is, would be a visual sighting of a Bigfoot or B would be uh, physical evidence um, or, or smells or vocalizations um, to support the fact that uh, Bigfoot exists. Okay, so we'll have a look at the, some of these uh, points and then we will flip back to the BFRO website, the Bigfoot Research Organization website, to look at um, further information on the sightings. So over by Campbell Sport, there's a sighting, October 2003, Class A sighting, ongoing encounters with Fang, an old family, I can't quite see that, on an old family farm, Fang. So this, this Bigfoot's got a name. Um, let's see what this is all about. October 2003, in... Portage County or Portage County, Portage County. Not really sure how would you pronounce that. Okay, Portage County, October 2003, Class A sightings. I myself have had many occasions with the creature. I have dubbed Fang. I've come to understand through self-experiences that there is more than one creature in our area. I go hiking quite often in the same area and know exactly where they, where they, where they usually are. As they tend to follow me most of the times I am there. My mother told me today about your website and I felt obliged to write. A fear of people coming to our area and trying to find Fang and his clan. I feel somewhat of an understanding and a protective closeness, and I feel they should be left alone. Fair enough. My children have heard their cries out in the woods, and we've gotten rather close enough for the smell many times. Just last week, my youngest son and I found footprints in the woods by a thicket, too dense for us to walk into. Okay. So interesting. Seems to be regular occurrences. Another site. Another sighting, an A, sight, A classification, February 1994. Man recounts sighting from his teens near Edinburgh. I can't quite read that with the label over it. Winter, 1994, Jay Lake area, West Branch of State State Park. West, West Branch State Park. A friend and I were fishing a pond. The pond was mostly frozen over except for a spot in the middle, which we were casting into. I don't know how long we were fishing, but across the pond, a figure still got, stood up from the shoreline area and walked up a steep hill. When it got to the top, it turned back to, to look at us. The figure was large, covered with hair, and walked on two legs. 
It was winter, the pond was frozen, and the figure wore no clothes, so there's no way it was a human. We were around 15 years old. So we took off, since we were scared by this encounter. We viewed the figure for maybe one to two minutes. The figure made no noise, walked up the hill, and turned back and looked at us. The figure didn't just run away. So interesting, an interesting account. And if anybody does have an account, uh, you can report your sightings to the BFRO, bfro.net. Here's a couple of Class B sightings. August 1999, tracks found in West Branch State Park. August 1999, tracks found in West Branch, West Branch State Park. While well, do, doing some early season scouting for deer in a remote part of West Branch State Park, I noticed a set of strange tracks that looked very fresh. At first, they looked very human, but I thought it was odd a person would be walking barefoot in some of the nastiest, deepest, and thick mud, mud slop around. The in, inlet along the shores of the lake were covered with pr pricker bush and br briars. I followed the tracks for about 400 yards until they cut through a mud swamp. A person would have taken the easy, dry trail. These tracks went through the mud swamp. I tried to step through the swamp, but sunk over my, bo over my boots. That's when I really looked hard at the tracks. They were not out outrageously long. I would say they were size 10, but they were very narrow, and they sunk a lot deeper into the mud than my 200 pound frame did. The toes were very strange and appeared to be much longer than humans. The left foot like it had suffered an injury or two of the interior toes. The stride was long and I had to stretch to, to walk the same path. I'm six feet tall. I circled around the swamp and caught the tracks on the other side of the swamp and followed them for 300 yards until I lost them back at the dry ground where they went into the forest. I've spent many days and evenings hunting and fishing here. Prior to finding these tracks, while well, night fishing, my friend and I heard loud wails and shrieking in the woods. It was not raccoons or owls, and appeared to move quickly past our location. Very interesting. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, what do you, what do you, what does everybody think of that? I mean, somebody walking through a swamp barefooted? I mean, not, me you know, it's a bit odd, very odd. And it would be, yeah, along, along this swamp. I, I take it, you know, when you're looking at at this, uh, this inlet, perhaps here or here, um, very wooded and swampy it's hard to believe that a bare you know a barefooted person would be you know walking through the woods and then walking into a forest without shoes on very interesting um, let's have a, a quick look at uh, another one in this area possible nighttime encounter while fishing yeah okay so that's June 2009. A god-awful deafening scream that was so unhumanly humanly loud 
and horrible, horribly frightening, that it immediately put me into a state of absolute scared to death. I'm going to die if I don't get away from this wretched scream. Wow. I hadn't felt this alarmed since fighting in Iraq for, for my life. It was the first time I was actually scared in the woods any time with a firearm at my side. Unbelievable. Well, that's very interesting. You know, um, an account from military uh, personnel who've been in wars and they come that close to, um, you know, potentially a Sasquatch and uh, it can scare the hell out of you. So, you know, very, it's, you know, and then these reports, it takes people a lot of guts to uh, report uh, these accounts. And if you do have an account, report it to the BFRO if you want to, if you wish to. Um, and then maybe get yourself on the map and uh, share your accounts with um, the BFRO and get on the map uh, if you want to. If you don't want to or want to remain anonymous, yeah, keep it to yourself. Nothing wrong with that. Lots of uh, sightings in Ohio. So, so please uh, subscribe to the channel and like the video. And if you'd like me to cover a particular state, um, please post down below and uh, we'll, we'll get around to that. Thank you.